Yeah, it gets kind of loud though, the microphone, so just to let you know. Yeah. I believe we're going to repent from our sins and come to Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can save us from the wages of sin. Christ died for us while we were sinners. But we're not called to be sinners forever. We're called to come and become saints. Become a saint, hallelujah, by the grace of God. And Jesus Christ can save you from all sin. doesn't matter what it is, lying, cheating, depression, suicide, anxiety. All these things come from sin. And Christ cares for you, folks. He understands your suffering in your soul. It might look like you're okay on the outside, but in the soul is suffering. And when the soul suffers, people go to things that make them feel good. People go to drugs, sex, whatever, concerts, but they can never fulfill you. Only Jesus Christ can fulfill you. I mean, the, the true Jesus, not the American Jesus, not the gay Jesus, not uh, the real Jesus Christ. He's the only Jesus that can truly set you free from any sin. Before I came to Jesus Christ, I was an adulterer. I was sleeping around with girls, people's wives and stuff because I didn't have any peace in my own life. And I thought maybe this girl can make me feel satisfied. Maybe this girl can make me feel better about myself. And it, it, it can never work, folks. You know, living for sex is it, not a good lifestyle. We cannot live for sex. We cannot live for drugs. We can't live for this world. See, this world can never satisfy you, folks. This world can never love you the way God loves you. The love of God is eternal. It's, it's never, it's everlasting, and God wants to put that love inside your soul so you don't go to things like sex and drugs. When you have the love of God, you're satisfied. You're satisfied entirely when you have the love of God. Not the love of this world. See, this world says there's a love too, but it's not the same love of God. See, the world says love is love, but it doesn't make any sense, because what does that even mean? No, love is God. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. So, people, God defines what love is. God defines what love is. We don't make what love is in our own heads. God already told us what love is. So, if we're not living for God's definition of love, we're in error. Because the world says lust is love. The world says lust is love. Oh, I love you, girl. I want to have sex with you. That's not love. That's called lust. It's not the same thing. Just because you want to have sex and morality, that's not called love. It's called lust. So, people, you've got to understand the difference, the difference between lust and love. See, when you love someone, you would sacrifice your life for that person. You're patient with that person. You're kind to that person. We actually love people. And the Bible says you must love your neighbor. You must love your enemies. So imagine how much love you must have in your soul. You have to love people who hate you. But that's not with the people. Most people, they don't love those who hate them. No, they, they despise them. They cuss at them. Some of you folks, your enemies, you, you hate your enemies too. You have no love for your enemies. And it shows you have no love of God inside you. Because God loved us, we were enemies, and God died for us. Would you would you sacrifice for your enemy? Would you help out your enemy? Some of you folks, you would never do that because you don't have the love of God living inside you. You have a fake love. You have a fake love living inside you. Don't deceive yourself saying you're a loving person, but you're cussing out the preacher. You're cussing out God. You, you're gossip, you slander. Don't deceive yourself in saying you're a loving person when you're destroying your neighbor right beside you because God's going to judge you in your heart. Not your, your lifestyle shows evident what's actually inside your heart. Your lifestyle shows you, do you really believe in Jesus or not? Because it's very easy to say, I believe in God, I believe in God. Okay, do you live for God? Do you, do you live for God? The Bible says even demons believe in God, so it's very easy to believe in God. That's super easy. But do you live for God? Can you live for God when the whole world isn't living for God? Can you stay pure when the whole world is living in sexual morality, when the whole world is living in pornography and having orgies? Can you live in purity? That shows you how much love you actually have for God to obey God when the whole world is filthy. This is the test as a believer, as a true Christian, to live in holiness and righteousness but when most of the world is clubbing and drinking and doing all kinds of immorality. And if you can live in purity, it shows you, God, I love you. And we live for God, not because we feel like we're forced to live, to live for God, because we love God. When you love someone, folks, it's not hard to obey them. It's not hard to do what they say when you actually love God. So I don't feel like I'm being forced to not have sex. I don't want to have sex. I don't want to have sex outside of marriage because I love God. I want to obey God. So it's not hard for me to stay away from immorality because I love God. But people who don't love God, when you hear, oh, God says you can't see what's out of marriage, you get very angry. You get very aggressive because you feel like it's a chore. You feel like, oh, I have to stop doing this and that. I have to give up this and that because you don't have any love for God. It's very grievous for you to live for God. It's, it's like a burden upon you to live for God. And it's not a burden. It's just because your heart is the issue. You love sin more than righteousness. 
Because when you love sin, you're going to defend sin. But if you love God, you're going to defend God. So what do you love, folks? Do you love your sin or do you love God? Because if you love God and if you have sin, you'll say things like, Lord, please help me overcome the sin. See, when I came to Jesus Christ, I had a problem with masturbation. I had a problem with pornography, sleeping around with girls. But I didn't say, oh, God loves me anyway, I'm going to continue. No. I said, God, I have a problem. Please help me. Lord, please give me the strength to overcome my addictions. And God gave me the strength to overcome because I cried out to him. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So many folks, you, you have never asked God to set you free from your sin. You haven't asked God to set you free. You've just been told you're born this way. You're like, okay, I'm born this way. It's not my fault. And that's, how, that's what the devil wants. The devil wants to deceive you in thinking that you have no responsibility. No, folks, you are responsible for your own sin. You are responsible for your own sin. And you have you can have the power to overcome your sin, but it's just you don't want to. Now that you can, you can overcome it with God's help, but it comes down to you don't want to. You love your sin more than God. The Bible says in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And that's true. It's just not homosexuals. It's also heterosexuals too. So many people love their sex life, their pornography. That was me before I came to Jesus Christ. I love sitting around with girls, going to clubs. So it's just not homosexuals. Keep it up, God bless you. It's, it's everyone, folks, without Jesus Christ. They love their pleasure more than they love Jesus Christ. And the Bible says it'll be like this in the last days. People glorify sex above the Creator. And, that, and that's, that's horrible, folks. That's filthy. We're not meant to just have sex and just pay bills and die. That's not the whole point of our existence, to just have sex where we want, and that's it. That's not the whole point of life, is to have sex. Sex is part of life, but God called us to be married with a male and a female and reproduce, to multiply. God wants us to multiply, not just have sex and kill babies or have sex and re record it on Pornhub and get money. That's not the point of sex. Sex is a gift for, for married couples only. Sex is for a married couple. It's not, it's not for single people. It, it's not for transgenders. It, it's not for bachelors. You know, it's not for city girls. Sex is for married people. A married couple in the eyes of God is a male and a female. So sex is for married people only. But the devil wants you to feel like, oh, sex is for anyone, man. Just have sex whatever you want, but that destroys your soul. See, sex is very spiritual. It's more spiritual than anything else because your souls become one. Your souls become one flesh with that person you have sex with. And this is why rape is so terrible. Folks, rape is so terrible because it destroys the soul. So sex isn't just sex. It has emotional behind it. It's emotions. It's spiritual. But the world wants to convince you that sex is just sex, man. It doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Sex is very, very important in the eyes of God. It should be important to you, too. That you shouldn't want to have sex with anyone. Your body is personal, folks. You should love your body. You should love yourself. The Bible says love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if you have no respect for your body, you don't care for nobody else's body either. If you don't love yourself, you can't love anyone, people. You can't love anyone if you don't love yourself first. So if you have some type of hate towards yourself, you shouldn't be in any type of relationship. If you don't have respect for yourself, if you're insecure, well, why are you trying to get in a relationship in the first place? You, you don't need a friends with benefits. You need healing, folks. You don't need a sex buddy. You need healing. You need deliverance from all this pain and trauma the world has given you, what Satan has done to you. You don't need sex. You don't need drugs. You don't need concerts. You need healing. You need to be healed. You need deliverance. You need true healing. So you're not going out looking for sex with random people on Tinder and Grinder and Bumble and things like that. You have the peace of God living inside your soul. See, when you have the peace of God living inside your soul, you don't need anything else, folks. You don't have a desire to try to seek something else into the world. Because earthly things will never satisfy the soul. Earthly things will never satisfy your soul. It feels good, it feels good for the flesh. Your flesh feels good about it. But your soul is still miserable. So what does it matter to have all this sex with all these different people and you're, and you're still depressed? What does it matter to have all these things, even celebrities? All these celebrities, they're, they're famous, they have money, but they still do all these drugs and stuff and they end up like crack addicts because they don't have God. So it doesn't matter how much money and sex you have. Without Jesus Christ, you're still miserable. You're, you're always going to be miserable without Jesus Christ. You cannot replace Jesus Christ with sex. You can't replace God with sex and drugs and fame and concerts and parties. It, it's silliness, folks. It's never going to work. It, it's a waste of time. It's, it's a waste of money. You're wasting too much energy trying to, trying to hide from your pain. Stop trying to hide from your pain and take your pain to God. Stop hiding from your trauma and take it to God. You know, you have to grow up, folks. You can't keep hiding from our pain and try to cover it up with just drugs and stuff. 
Take all that stuff to Jesus. Let Jesus heal you. And he'll give you strength to overcome this evil world. Because this is the evil world we're living in. You know why it's evil? Because of sin. Because of mankind chooses sin. That's why it's evil. God didn't make it evil. But we make it evil because we love sin more than God. This is why God gave us his commandments. To love each other. To not kill. To not steal. To not commit adultery. These are loving commandments to protect you. This is for God. This is for you, folks. When God says don't steal, this is for your benefit. This is for you. Because God cares for you. But, folks, if you don't care about God's commandments, you don't care about your own soul. The Bible says you despise God's commandments. You despise your own soul, folks. So if you're ignoring God's commandments, you're just doing yourself an injustice. You're destroying your own self, your own body. Because the devil loves it when you don't believe in God. He loves it. It's easy for you to be manipulated if you don't have God. You know how easy it is to manipulate people who don't know God, who don't know Jesus? Just tell them, hey, man, do this for a couple thousand dollars. And they'll do it. So many people sell their souls for money. Girls sell their bodies for money because they have no faith in God. They have no reliance on the Creator. So when you don't have faith in God, folks, you're sitting ducks in this world. You're, you're a very easy target for these evil people up top, these elites who, pry, who prey on people who are poor, who prey on people who are damaged. Folks, the devil preys on you when you're damaged. When you're alone, when, you're feel, when you feel like no one loves you, he preys on people just like you. The devil uses people to come up to come to you and destroy.